unvoiced, from unaspirated to aspirated, or change of root uh, vowel, yeah? uh, for example, uh, from lax into tense, or change of rhyme, yeah? is all morphologically productive. The words remain cognate, uh, but uh, they start meaning differently. Uh, this is especially uh, transparent uh, when we are dealing uh, with the so-called uh, uh, ten good verb stems. According to Nishida Tatsu, from the beginning and then to Munhuan Sen, there are two basic verb stems in ten good. The alter, uh, the, those were originally cognate, and uh, they derive from one root. But because of the of the vow of the sound change, yeah, uh, they started meaning differently. They either became causative, or either became uh, there there was transition between uh, transitive and intransitive and whatever. It was all reproduced uh, sort indicated uh, through the sound change. Uh, but uh, there was a problem for tangles, how to indicate those things in writing in orthography. Because if they had chosen to follow, let's say, Tibetan pattern and use letters, uh, this would have been done very easily. Uh, just you, uh, you adjust or change the vowel or something, and that's it. Yeah. Now, since they have chosen to follow the way of Fang Kuanzi, of the characters, uh, this became complicated. But nonetheless, yeah, uh, this. Uh, uh, this task was solved somehow. Now, uh, for example, here, as we can see, these two characters, yeah, they more or less uh, share some common features, not quite. Uh, but you see, this one reads bia, and this one reads pie. Yeah, so there is this also very well known to the students of phonology. Yeah, uh, the change between voiced, uh, sorry, between. Uh, uh, Unaspirated. Uh, yeah, voiced unaspirated into uh, aspirated unvoiced. Yeah, so it's be up here, whereas the rhyme remains the same. So here we can see that there is certain similarity. Yeah, in the writings of those. Now this one is causative and anti-causative. Yeah, a g uh, melt to melt, and this is yeah to melt something. As we can see again, a g she again, a change. Uh, of the initial consonant is reflected in writing, yeah? To cut something off, uh, the same uh, thing as here, the same sound law, yeah? And again, as we can see, this is the basic one, uh, uh, this with addition, it indicates the change of reading, uh, change of reading. A lil here, yeah, this is uh, a, a retroflex, yeah? Although uh, Gun Huan Chang, when discussing that, he has a great, I think, commentary. He said uh, there was an erization here, he says. Uh -huh. But he says this doesn't mean that it actually was pronounced as R. So I how that it was pronounced. <laughs> OK, so it's, uh, this is to continue. Yeah, also Lil here. Uh, za Za and other than that. So as you can see again, yeah, to cut something off, here, here. Yeah, that is to use uh, cho cho again. Yeah, so we can see that the change in the consonant is reflected in orthography. This is not a discovery of any sort, of course, uh, but something which indicates that the uh, structure of tangled characters is actually pretty much connected. Yeah, with the many mm, with their phonetic values. Uh, sometimes. Uh, the change of consonant is one thing, which is morphologically most productive. <clears throat> uh, there are also other things, such as, for example, insertions of medials, yeah, of e and u, for example, yeah, that is reflected in the dem, yeah, or sometimes change of rhyme <clears throat> and change of tone. Uh, this is also very important, and why is it important? We will see as soon as we uh, try to read something, yeah. No, because uh, these are the two basic stems of the tangled word. One here is E stem, V, D, D, G, E, 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 it always has an E, yeah? Whereas it's mostly O, 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 or, and 
have he to, uh, with this code finally. Yeah, I am not quite sure what Gun Hansen meant when he uh, designed this phonetics, but nonetheless, what I'm trying to say here is uh, that a tangut verb uh, accepts markers of agreement. It basically first and second person, uh, sorry, first and second person pronouns uh, in both uh, sing singular and plural. Yeah. Uh, so, as we can see here, vivo, to do something, to make something. Uh, this one, uh, sorry, uh, the, the two stems. This one, the so-called stem B, according to Nishida Tatsu's observations. Uh, these verbs accept markers of agreement. These ones. No, this one. Markers of agreement, whereas these ones don't. So this basically means, yeah, uh, that uh, the, st the a step of the tangut verbs. I mean, this one with he. Uh, it itself marks the agreement with the third uh, person singular or plural, whereas agreement with the first and second person requires the verbs of the B stem. And these verbs also accept the agreement markers. Now, if we look onto the agreement markers, then we will discover another thing, yeah? Is that those markers of agreement are fully cognate, sorry, sorry fully homonymous, uh, with the basic pronouns. First person singular, second person singular, and second person plural. Uh, this one reads na, this one reads na, and this one reads ni. So they are all fully homonymous. Uh, one can, of course, imagine some kind of grammaticalization path here, but uh, I don't think it's mm, necessary uh, for us to do this at this particular moment. So. Uh, that is to say that uh, these are, although they all sound, sound pretty much the same, uh, these characters belong to different rhyme groups, which basically indicates that they were pronounced, there was a very clear difference in pronunciation between these, and they were pretty much contrasted with each other. And moreover, that they were also clearly discerned uh, in hearing. Yeah? <clears throat> Uh, so, and uh, verb agreement is basically the fundamental thing of the, in the Tangut language. Uh, another thing which we also need to uh, take care of before we start any reading uh, would be the so-called prefixation system. Uh, this is really fundamental. Uh, uh, here I would like to draw your attention uh, to this very simple fact. Yeah, that, that so called, if you can see, here is the sound change, yeah, ida o basically, but there are also other. Now, if we look here, those is also two steps of the verb prefixes. The step the, those verb prefixes probably are derived from verbs originally, but probably we just don't know that. And I think Jacques Guillaume and others uh, could vilify me for that. Uh, but nonetheless, apart from this. Ah, ye, this pair. Other verb prefixes, as you can see, they are also cognate and emerged also uh, through the way of the vowel change. Uh, this one uh, is middle vowel, so it's, and this is all the standard, ki, ki, uh, vi, vi, uh, da, di, and also there is di, and also uh, ri, ri. Uh, here it is important that we look, because these characters, they are only different uh, with their vowel here. Even uh, other, the initial consonant, uh, the medial, they are all here, and they are all totally similar. And the tones are also different, ex except for this and this. It's uh, the second tone, and the, here it is the, third, uh, the first, and so only two tones here. Intended. Uh, why it is important? Because uh, for the students of Tangut language, 
if one ever decides to try to like learn it one way or another, uh, this is fundamental. Why is it fundamental? Because this allows one to uh, divide or to punctuate sentences. A tangut is an SOV language. Subject, object, verb. That is to say the verb is normally, in 90% of cases, is in the end. And if we are not talking about Belhi language, but about the standard minyak, yeah, standard tangu, yeah, it's very easy to identify a verb, yeah, because uh, it has a verb root. Uh, the verb root, I, root is in most cases preceded by a prefix. And prefixes, uh, they serve to indicate tense aspect and mode. And by the agreement mark. So if we see uh, something like then we can, can tell at once yeah, that we are looking on a full-fledged tangled verb. Here is the verb root to do. This is the uh, uh, perfective or perfective uh, prefix and the verb agreement. I have done. I did. Could you just, with, with that example, could you give us another verb? Yeah, sure. Uh, Could you pronounce that right there? Uh, ki vi na. Well, uh, if I pronounce that this way to the tangles, I'm afraid they won't understand. <laughs> <laughs> you know, once uh, asked, who was that? That. Oh, yeah, actually, I've asked uh, once and once. This was very long ago and was still alive. I said, uh, uh, if we take your reconstruction of the time with language, imagine we have a time machine and we go back to Shisha and try to talk to them uh, using that. <laughs> what do you think the effect is going to be? <laughs> and Guhanshan said, well, you got to understand, yeah, this is not for reading. That's for looking. <laughs> <laughs> That's for looking. And another one, uh, something like. Basically, I want you to write it underneath that one so uh, you can see which parts are, are staying stable uh, and which are. Yeah, changing. okay. Uh, let me see. V, this one, she, if, I, if I'm not uh, mistaken, uh, po, not p. Uh, I, uh, because uh, this is I, uh, that is the, that's the first uh, step, that's the step two, yeah, make them return. So uh, this is uh, uh, this is the, uh, the, the the prefix v here. This this one uh, means desired action or sometimes imperative mood, and this is causative verb. Yeah, and this is the verb root to return. Uh, for example, uh, or now let us uh, uh, see. Yeah, and. Uh, since it is prefix, the negative uh, goes here between prefix and the root. But I mean, in reading texts, it's actually uh, it's much simpler than it seems. Yeah. Uh, just as soon as uh, one is able to discern those uh, those things, they kind of come quite uh, 
uh, easily. Uh, another problem here is what? Is that, uh, you see, uh, we have no way of telling uh, uh, of how those, I mean, this work is currently being done. The distribution, I mean, we can say that those characters, I mean, they're all, the words, sorry, uh, they're all cognate. Yeah, they basically derive either from a common source or from each other. Uh, the problem is that uh, what is the distribution between specific verb roots? They only merge with specific prefixes. Uh, I mean, it's not that we can may take, uh, for example, uh, this to return, yeah? Uh, we can, uh, uh, this one in the future, I would like to make them return. Uh, but we can use this one, which is completed action, yeah, also V here. V. v. Returned, or I have returned, or they returned, or something. But for example, uh, please take a look. Uh, these two, yeah, are similar, yeah, and basically mean the same. But we cannot take this key. We cannot use key instead of this we. It only goes like this. It's a basically a uh, standard distribution, yeah? Uh, we can't really say, I mean, we can shift. And you see, uh, in terms of uh, usage, yeah? Uh, it's for the character, to re for the word to return, yeah? It's basically these two, for example, yeah? It cannot be these two. Clear, yeah? It, uh, so specific verb roots, they only come together with specific prefixes. It's a little bit different, I think, from Tibetan, yeah, whereas there is some flexibility here. Uh, and the problem is that the function of those prefixes is uh, very important because the, uh, the tense aspect mode, everything is all, is all demonstrated by the prefixes. Now, the problem is that uh, for a student of tangled language, it's basically important uh, just to be able, I mean, if one is not pursuing linguistic goals, uh, it's just enough to be able to discern them or uh, to remember them or identify them when he sees those. Okay. Uh, now this is the, another thing which we also, I think, need to uh, pay attention to uh, before we uh, proceed. Like I said, learning time is very easy. Yeah, uh, by the time uh, we finish this presentation, uh, uh, you will be in full command <laughs> of everything which there is to know about Tangled. Okay, basically, which is not going to make it overly complicated. Uh, it's just that uh, there is ongoing controversy. How many cases are in Tangled? I originally was uh, sure that there is like enormous amount of cases. Uh -huh. uh, now I've changed my mind. Uh, and I think that actually there are only three. Uh, one is the direct case or nominative, yeah, which has zero marking. It's not marked at all. Uh, there is also this tangled character, Kha, uh, which is uh, uh, Kha, yeah, also with this, uh, which is a topical marker. Yeah, uh, and translated as Chinese zhe. And uh, I'll mention this later uh, in a moment. Uh, the other one is the indirect case, which indicates the indirect object. Yeah, well, the marker is yi. Uh, normally translated as the Chinese zhe. And this is the same marker uh, which is used for genitive uh, and also for dative as it should be. And, of course, finally, the so-called ergative case. Ergative case is actually a word, jivi, uh, which translates into Chinese as xingwei, action. Uh, but, in fact, is not translated. It, its usage in tangled language is quite limited. It basically only is used 
uh, when uh, I guess uh, a third person is doing something else to another third person uh, and also with some uh, passive uh, or and anti-passive sometimes uh, uh, meaning it's so it's not really that not as in Tibetan for example yeah uh, not as in Tibetan and it's not cognate with the Tibetan geese so it's probably done with innovation I guess uh, but you know all those things I mean it's just Information. Now, finally, those what were uh, uh, were uh, uh, rendered as case markers. Uh, Kepping believed that those are post positions. Yeah. So, again, dog ha gu u ri ha cha. One can memorize those uh, pretty fast. So, in, in, within, inside, from, together, towards, onto. The Chinese versions here. So, again. I think uh, not complicated at all. <clears throat> all right. So uh, although this is not everything which I uh, wanted uh, to say, uh, but uh, no. I think yeah. Here we go. Well, what about a break? Yes, that's what I wanted to say. We have finished uh, theory now. As you can see, tangled language in a nutshell. Uh, just like I said, if Camping ever heard me speaking like that, she would probably shut me on the spot. <laughs> as soon as she saw me, or Jacques Guillaume, or others. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, yeah, so, and yeah, while we have a break uh, before, uh, so that uh, you gentlemen don't feel, uh, ladies and gentlemen, don't feel too bored. Uh, there is this particular one which you can enjoy in the meanwhile while you're having your coffee. Because uh, uh, the uh, last part of our uh, meeting uh, will be uh, devoted to uh, this little dude and to uh, another little dude. And until how long we have? Well, we have till five. I until would say, five. Why don't we come back? Why don't we reconvene at 3.15? Very good. Very good. So. Mm -hmm.